What's up guys, DanPH77 here, and today I'm bringing you the 1.3 build video, the long-awaited build video. So let's get right to it. Alright, so the purpose of this video, this guide, is going to be to show you how to optimize your gear and how to help you select what gear set works best for you and your playstyle. Alright, so my main build right now is Alpha Bridge. I have four pieces of Alpha Bridge with the Reckless and Savage Gloves. So Reckless is going to give me 14% increased damage, but I'm going to increase my income in damage by 10%. Now as far as Reckless goes, against players the income in damage is not too bad, but it's AI right now. AI is where you can really feel it. But overall, the current state of the game with the level 35 NPCs, they ignore about 50% of your armor. So that is one thing to factor in. I still think Reckless is very viable, especially if your play style can work around the con that it does have. Now let's talk about the Savage Gloves real quick. The Savage Gloves are going to give you 14% additional critical hit chance on targets out of cover. Now this is not going to show or reflect in your character tab because targets are not always out of cover. But whatever your character tab shows, you can add 14% more critical hit chance to it if they're out of cover which is huge in my opinion so most of the time I'm always wearing savage gloves almost all my builds is going to be reckless and savage with a four piece the only exception to that is sentry and striker right now because sentry and striker both require five pieces to get the bonus I do run a striker build and I use all five pieces so I'll normally either do a five piece striker with a reckless or a five piece striker with savage gloves and the same goes with sentry Aside from the Savage Gloves, the attributes that you need to focus on. If you are running an SMG, you want to try to roll SMG damage. If you're running assault rifle, assault rifle damage, shotgun, shotgun damage. Whatever gun you are using, try to get the attribute that matches that gun that will benefit. The other two talents that I think are always a necessity no matter what is critical hit chance and critical hit damage. Another thing to consider is the skill attribute. For the skill attribute, always roll it towards your playstyle. If you're running a smart cover build, you want to roll smart cover damage increase or smart cover resilience. Um, sticky bomber, if you're that, you can get the sticky bomb damage increase. And then there's skill attributes that increase your pulse. And there's so many more attributes. All right, so let's go back to my, my main build right now, the four alpha bridge, reckless savage. So, what I like to do when I'm making a build is I like to first focus on my toughness. What kind of toughness do I want? I personally, and this depends on your playstyle, like I said, and the individual player, but for me, I think I survive pretty well with 350k toughness. So that's the average I normally go with. Um, I've went down to 300, 320, and if I'm doing glass cannon, I'll even go down to like 270 to 300, somewhere in that range. But some people need to run with higher toughness. Just depends on your playstyle. Uh, I do have builds that can go all the way up to 700k toughness. I just prefer less toughness and more focus on farms. But for the way I build and the way everyone should build, focus on the toughness that you want first. So once you get it to say, like for my build, 350k toughness, you get the stamina you need get the toughness you need. So let me explain the toughness number, right? Toughness is a combination of your health and your armor. No matter what you are doing, every build should have maximum armor. So, if you scroll down to survivability, you'll see armor. Mitigate 75% weapon damage. Now, the number over here, I believe it's like 5,300-ish. So I am right on the money, I believe, for this full armor cap. After you've gotten full armor, which should be pretty easy, all you need to do is focus on rolling armor on your chest piece, your knee pads, and your holster. After I have achieved the toughness that I want, I look at my skill power. Skill power is also relatively easy. Rule of thumb, roll skill power on your backpack and your mask. Now here's something else you can do, but all this depends on RNG. Say with Alpha Bridge, I could roll crit damage on my backpack instead of skill power, and then I could roll crit chance on my mask. But my skill power is going to be so bad, 
that my heals are going to be awful unless I have the skill attribute first aid self heal. Now what that does if I have enough of those rolled on my gear my health will actually be beneficial enough to help me with the low skill power that I have but I'll be able to do more raw damage without relying on skills such as pulse. Overall though I think for most people it's best to roll skill power on the backpack and the mask and you want to try to aim to get 18,000 or more skill power. I think 20 is a good number. Now if you are a skill build of course you're going to want a lot more than that because some skills require upwards to 50, 60, even 70 on some specific skills. Alright, so after we've gotten our toughness and our skill power where they need to be, I focus everything else on firearms. So after you get your build the way you want it, you can focus on mod slots. Now with your mod slots you have performance mods, stamina, and firearms mods. Overall, I prefer using stamina and farms mods to fill out and complete the build. I don't really care too much for the performance mods, even though they have uh, made them a lot better. I still prefer stamina and farms. But there are some performance mods that can help increase your pulse or increase your smart cover. There's two stamina and farm mods that you should be focused on. I like the farm and stamina mods that provide critical hit chance because if I have five of those I have almost eight percent more critical hit chance to be more exact 7.5 critical hit chance if you add all those together and that might not sound like much but with some guns that additional 7.5 percent is a lot now some people a lot of other people like to use skill power so stamina farms right and then you can have the skill power roll which can increase your skill power and if you have five of those you can sacrifice rolling backpack to skill power and roll it for crit damage and instead use all skill power high skill power rolled stamina and firearm mods and then have about five six thousand skill power from those mods alone alright so let's take a look at the character tab real quick with critical hit chance you want to focus on getting it to about 30 percent that's my personal preference I like to get my critical hit chance around 30 percent and of course like I said I have the savage gloves on which increases it by another 14 percent that's substantial but without savage gloves just in general the base you want it to be about 30 percent another thing that you want to focus on to do more damage is the critical hit damage now to get this up, like I said, it's going to roll on your gloves, you can roll it on your backpack, and you can roll it on your knee pads. You can also have it on weapon mods as well. But in general, I like to have my critical hit damage about where it's at now. This is kind of the low side, but anywhere from 180 to 200. Now if you have 200 plus critical hit damage, you're good. Alright, let's take a look at the survivability. Alright, so exotic damage resilience. What does that do? If you're running final measure, you're going to have 50% or more, so you're definitely going to be good on exotic damage. If you don't run final measure, it's good to roll it to maybe 10-13%. Now you can roll on other pieces of gear and get more than that, get in the 20%. So basically it allows me to survive a sticky bomb at full health. Burn resistance helps you against fire bullets, so you'll be able to resist those better. The last two are very important in my opinion, disrupt and shock. Disrupt helps you against the flashbangs, and it helps you against the EMP grenades. Disrupt will help you resist having your skills taken down. And the reason why this is so crucial is because if you can't use your skills, like first aid, you could die because of it. If you run out of medkits and you can't first aid, and you're disrupted, you're dead. Shock resistance is important because it helps you resist against shock turrets and shock grenades. If you ever notice, like if someone throws a shock grenade on you and it feels like you have been shocked for a decade, this is where shock resistance come in. Alright, so let's go back to my main build, Alpha Bridge. So what's so great about Alpha Bridge? Well, let's look at the bonuses. You get two more med kits, you get 100% health regen, but what really makes Alpha Bridge stand out, what really makes it great, as a set bonus for 
If your primary and secondary weapon is of the same category, they both gain all the unique active talents. So, right now, I run an MP7 as my primary. It has responsive, deadly, and fierce on it. Now, because of Alpha Bridge, I get three more talents if I equip another SMG. Same goes for the rifles. If you use two rifles, if you use two marksmen's, two shotguns, two LMGs, it doesn't matter. You will get up to six unique talents. So, like we were saying, responsive, deadly, fierce on my MP7. And then I have a PP-19, which has unforgiven, brutal, and hurried. So I get all six of those talents. The only thing that can make this better, the only talent I would prefer more, is competent. So if my MP7 was responsive, deadly, and competent over fierce, it would do a lot more damage. Now what is competent? Competent I get 14% increased damage when I use a skill. So if I pulse, right, if I pulse and I'm within 10 meters of a target, I'm getting responsive, I'm getting deadly, I have the competent 14% increased damage, I have unforgiven if I lose health segments, I have brutal for headshot damage, and I have hurried. Now hurried is going to help you reload faster, it's, it basically mimics and simulates Firecrest. It does it very well actually. So hurried, I think, is a must because if you can reload faster you can keep up sustained damage it's very important in this game is to keep up sustained damage on target keep it so they can't heal make their heals ineffective because by the time they heal you've already knocked off half of their health again this is very important in a game like this now unforgiven here's why I like unforgiven unforgiven is like a fail safe in my opinion if I am out of medkits and if I if my first aid is on cooldown and I can't heal myself and I'm taking damage, Unforgiven can be the fell safe. It can be a fell safe that can save me from dying because I'm gonna start doing more damage as I'm taking damage. So one missing segment, I'm doing ten percent more damage. And if I have two missing segments, twenty four percent additional damage. That is a crap ton of damage, guys. Now if you're not running out for bridge, then of course my opinion on talents brutal daily responsive is still the king uh, brutal daily competent uh, responsive daily fierce is also a very good combination brutal daily fierce all those talents very good talents so outside of what your farms is RNG is going to determine how much higher of a base roll you will get for your gun alright let's talk real quick about sidearms with sidearms, I look at them more of a utility tool than anything. You definitely want to try to get a sidearm that has harmful. So basically what harmful does is it applies the bleed status to the target. I think it's very important, especially if you're not running predators. It helps slow players down there just running away. So let's talk about the DPS number. Don't look at it. Don't focus on it. It means nothing for the most part. I look at the actual damage per shot. So for my farms, 13.7 is very good. You could obtain the same DPS number and have less damage per shot and still have the same DPS number. And that's why DPS is inaccurate. You can't look at that. Now I know I was just ranting on about DPS being accurate, but for the most part, mine is relatively accurate. Why? Because I focused on high damage and my talents are focused on damage. I do not have the accurate talent. Accuracy will inflate your DPS. Let's look at the gear that I use. I'm going to show you all the gear sets that I use and my favorite gear sets. Before we continue into the other gear sets that I have and use, let me talk about what I have on real quick. This is really good if you need more ammo. I think most people know about this right now, but we'll just go over it real quick. You need to get a Lone Star vest, a Lone Star mask, and you need to get the paramedic and police backpacks. Paramedic backpack is going to give you two additional med kits, and in my case, if I'm using Alpha Bridge, that's seven standard, and with the paramedic, I'm going to have nine total. The police backpack is going to just give you 75% more ammo, and combined with Lone Star here, 
that's 100%. So I got 100 plus the 75 from the backpack, and then I have two mod slots here and here. So that's four mod slots with 10% additional ammo capacity. So that's the best way to get as most ammo as possible. All right, real quick, I want to talk about the body armor. The chest piece that I will always normally use most often is Reckless, and I also have a Vigorous that I'll use occasionally. Vigorous is good because you can use a booster shot and still get an overhill. All right, let's talk about my Predator build. Okay, so I'm using Reckless, Savage, and Four Piece Predator. What does a Predator do? I'm sure everyone knows, but let's go over it anyway. Predator is going to give you 20% optimal range. So that's going to basically mean that your damage is going to be, your fall off damage is going to be less. So let's just say, hypothetically speaking, without optimal range, let's say I was doing 5,000. But with this 20%, I could be doing 7,000. Like these are just made up numbers, but generalize, it's just you're going to be doing more damage at that longer range, less drop off damage. Set bonus 3, 800 assault rifle damage, and 700 pistol damage. I don't really care about the pistol damage for the Predator build. It would have been kind of cool on Sentry in a way. But, because if I'm going to be using a pistol or a pistol build, I'm going to be using Sentry. But, the assault rifle damage is very good. Especially with Predator, because if people are running away, you're going to be using a rifle to mark them down. And keep that bleed status on them to slow them down and be able to catch up with them. So why is the 800 assault rifle damage good? Well, let's look at the set bonus 4 real quick. So basically hit 10 consecutive shots while switching target to make the target bleed for 100% of the damage already done by those bullets. So the more damage you're doing, you're doing 100% of those 10 shots. But AI in specific, you'll be doing a lot of bleed damage. I've gotten up to 60, 70k bleed damage on the normal and with like pulse and smart cover and, and stuff like that factored in you could be doing 150k bleed damage it's just amazing especially against AI but in players the main thing for predators mark is applying that bleed now a good thing to use as far as skills when you're using predator is to use a flashbang to flash them and then put the bleed status on them so they can't first aid and they can only use med kits to heal so what happens when they're out of med kits? If they're out of med kits and you're putting bleed on them, they're slowed down, they're bleeding, they're losing health, and you flash them so they can't use their first aid, they're going to die. So the flashbang is a great combination to use for Predator. Predator is a very strong set and it's underused. Not many people use it, but I love it. Alpha Bridge and Predator are my favorite sets by far. Let's talk about my sentry build. So I'm using a five-piece sentry with Savage Gloves. If you are good with a marksman rifle, or if you want to do a pistol build, or if you want to do shotguns, anything that's semi-automatic, you want to be using the sentry gear set. Uh, if you're doing pistol damage, it's actually better to have decisive gloves. Decisive headshots with the sidearm deal 25% more damage. And this is a lot of damage if you're doing a pistol build with a shield. Now, sentry is still very good with an SMG. But overall, if you like using sentry, it's best used with semi-automatic weapons. That's where you can gain its full benefit. All right, so let's talk about my striker build. I use a striker five piece. Let's take a look at the bonuses. 10% enemy armor damage, 20% critical hit damage, and then you got every consecutive hit deals 1% more damage, stacks up to 100%. If you miss, though, it's 2% drop off. And then the bonus is reduced by 1% every second. Overall, this is a very powerful set. Right now it's bugged. Uh, you used to be able to switch weapons and still retain your buff. Now if you switch weapons, it debuffs. That will be fixed. And then you got your 10% enemy armor damage. And you got your remaining critical hit damage at 30%. 241% critical hit damage on the base. Now if I hit my pulse right now, I'm going to be doing over 300%. If someone hit a full pulse, that's 341%. You will be melting people. All right, so lastly, let's take a look at my Firecrest build. With Firecrest, I use a Reckless, and I use three Firecrest, and then two Sentry. I think this combination works out the best. 
So what does the three fire crest do? It gives you a hundred percent reload speed. Basically the reload speed, the reason why it's so important is it allows you to keep up that constant damage. Sustained damage is very important in this game. But it will also inflate your DPS a lot, as you can see. 343k on my MP7. My damage is still quite good on my MP7, 13.1 compared to my Alpha Bridge was 13.7. So either way, this is still a very good build, but the, the DPS number, like I said, is inflated. So one thing that's extremely important in this game is the recalibration station. We were talking about getting the right talents on weapons and getting the right attributes on gear and basically optimizing your gear. The recal station helps you do that unless you have been blessed by R and Jesus and you don't need it. Most of us need it though. And most of the time you get screwed over a lot and you waste a lot of Phoenix credits if you're doing weapon rerolls and everything. But every once in a while you get what you need, which is great. Now with weapons, for example, you can reroll the weapon talents. Say if you got a brutal deli and the other talent was complete crap, you could roll it, try to get what you want. You have a maximum of six rerolls. And then with gear, of course, you can reroll the attributes of your gear. Alright guys, so I think that pretty much covers everything. Overall, you've seen the gear sets I like best. Those are the best damage dealing slash DPS dealing sets. Overall guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it informative and I hope it helps you uh, balance out your build and make a, a build that uh, does a lot of damage and helps you in the dark zone, helps you have fun. Alright guys, so if you have any comments, comment below. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. It really helps out a lot. And if you have any additional questions on top of the comments, you can catch me where I live stream normally every day, starting around 8 p.m. Central. Other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed the video once again, and I'll catch you later.